Maps change how we see the world and they're so important for planning conservation, but it's really hard to map underwater habitats. Today I'm talking to Dr. Chris Rothseemer from the University of Queensland and he's an expert in mapping underwater habitats using satellites. So Chris, do you want to tell me a bit about this protocol you developed that enable you to link satellite images to on the ground data? It's basically going out in the field and taking care that you have a GPS with you that is floats at the surface and that you can collect information on the water. And by knowing a timestamp for your photos or your data collection and the GPS timestamp, you can basically give it coordinates. Now, why is it important to give coordinates? So that we can actually align it, what you see in the satellite image. And basically say, oh, wow. So this area on the satellite image is seagrass or it's coral or it's algae or it's rubble or it's sand. And so we try to find all these different kind of features that make up a coral reef or another underwater environment and combine that to make a total map out. And we've used the satellite image to find to us other pixels that have the same characteristics and then make a map out of it. You've been doing this for quite a number of years in a whole bunch of different regions, but then I understand one day you got a phone call that really blew you away because it was a totally different scale you were being asked about. Usually I'm used to create maps for a single reef or a couple of reefs. And in December two, September 2000, um, no, December 2017, I got this phone call and said, just before Christmas, said, Chris, could you map all the coral reefs in the world? Which was, um, of course, a really exciting but mind-blowing exercise. So how do you go about mapping all the coral reefs in the world? First of all, you have to scale up what I've been doing for years uh, on my own or with one other person. So I had needed more smart people around me to help me make this happen. Secondly, I needed somebody who could download my brain and knowledge and turn it into code and basically make it an open source environment so that it could be processed. And then we need to reach out to the world to get us information what local people know about their reef and what's there and preferably with coordinates, with GPS coordinates, so that we could align it with satellite images. One really nice example is, for instance, what happened in Cuba. C Cuba, it's illegal to have a GPS, so a really a handheld GPS. But people do have uh, smartphones, and in the smartphone is a GPS. So this was an example where somebody, and how funny it is, had two big Coca-Cola bottles, really <laughs> big, yeah. and put the iPhone in a plastic bag on top of the Coca-Cola bottle, and they had an underwater a GoPro camera and did photo transacts. And yeah, it works, because I mean, you can download the GPS, the, the, the positions from your iPhone is, or your smartphone as well. So yeah, really exciting. <laughs> That's so good. Next to that, we needed satellite images that covered all the world's coral reef on a regular basis so that we actually could do the same thing we tried to do for a small reef but then for a whole reef system. And so we reached out to over a thousand people, we got over two million satellite images, over 300,000 lines of codes combined and over three years we mapped all the coral reefs in the world. How much coral reef is there out there and, and, and is the map out and available now? Yeah, so. There is lots of coral reefs. It's about, uh, what, I think, 46,000 square kilometers of coral habitat. But then the whole reef system is even bigger, way bigger. And on top of that, um, we know that there's at least 231,000 reefs globally. Now, how, how they are used, so people are now uh, downloading those data sets from the Allen Coral Atlas for free, completely for free. They can download the geomorphic map, the benthic map, the depth, uh, the satellite imagery that was used to create the maps, they can all download it and put it in their own GIS system for a single reef, for a whole country, for the whole world. And countries take it up as being their new map for their reef system and some countries didn't have reefs, uh, maps of their reefs. Uh, and they use it to create marine parks or understand the impact of erosion on reefs, those kind of things. This yep. work was funded by philanthropist Paul Allen and the Vulcan Foundation, as I understand it. Yes. So it takes a, a big organisation to try and muster the, 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 I guess, human power to make it happen. Initiated yeah. by the Vulcan philanthropic uh, Paul Allen, the late Paul Allen, um, of uh, Microsoft uh, co-founder, of a developer.
and um, they, Paul Allen went together with um, Ruth Gates, a famous, uh, sadly passed away, uh, coral reef scientist, and they started talking and got in connection with um, uh, Planet, who provided satellite images, and then together with Greg Esner, who has really lots of experience in terrestrial environments and started going marine environments, and then they approached us with our experience of mapping the Great Barrier Reef to say, can we use that to map all the reefs in the world? And that, co that um, collaborative effort of international partners, including uh, actually also National Geographic and Coral Reef Alliance, we basically created uh, this, this map and this website where people can download the maps, but also analyze them and compare them with uh, marine park zones, uh, economic zones, and also, um, I say, look at bleaching uh, impacts. So, it's, and the maps are having an amazing impact, right? So last night we're standing on the beach enjoying some beers and watching the sunset over the reefs of Heron Island and yeah. you were talking about how you'd spent years developing these techniques on these very reefs. But do you want to just talk a little bit more about how they've been used in other countries now and the, the impact that's having for their marine plan? We did some, some initial mapping of um, the reefs in Sri Lanka. And then we found out that uh, a, a group, an area along the coast, didn't have any maps. And based on our maps that triggered their discussion and pushed the government to make a marine protected area. So that's an example. Jamaica, the same thing. Uh, the Marine Ministry of Marine Affairs and Fisheries in Indonesia adopted the Alan Coral Atlas maps to basically describe all their reefs in Indonesia so that they better could do conservation and management of their reef systems. And then what's amazing about this data set is that it's all open access too, so yeah. freely available to anyone that wants to use it. Yeah, and that keeps on being mind-blowing if people say, uh, say, so it's open access, So, but who do I pay? I said, no. This is the really good thing of the Vulcan Philanthropic, that they basically put all their funding in to make it completely open access for anybody, so anybody in the world can use it. Um, I guess just for early career researchers, who are thinking that you know, it might be working on a system and they're not sure how it's ever going to have impact. Do you have any advice for people as, as your final word? Yes, I definitely. I think do what you like to do. And um, uh, I say your passion will make it happen and understanding where the needs are and your passion will drive it to somewhere where it's will, your research will be very uh, useful. As you can see, um, Dr. Chris Ralph Seema from the University of Queensland is a very passionate researcher and very passionate about the um, mapping of coral reefs. So this has been the Conservation Hackers Vlog. Thanks for joining Chris and myself, Dr. Chris Brown on the vlog. Uh, if you like this episode, please share us with friends. It's the number one way we can be shared around. And don't forget to subscribe on YouTube. <laughs>